it's an interesting fact because we, we, we actually sell cannabis, you know, in retail store based on indica, sativa, uh, you know, hybrids, Hybrid, yeah. stuff like this, right? Like you're right, there's no, not much land race left and those land race, you know, are the, the core business of breeding at some point. Right yeah. now what we're doing is we're doing a lot of inbreeding and that mm -hmm. never ended well in the history of agriculture, <laughs> right? So, so, you know, right now we're still in the, pool, in the gene pool where we, we have good genetics and stuff, but ultimately we'll need to bring back those land race to start new life new stocks and stuff mm -hmm. like this. So my name is Jose Dominguez and welcome to the Ganja Show. So I was just uh, looking at uh, some of your videos or interviews that you've done before. You've been in the industry for like quite a li long time. How... Uh, but before all of that, how did you get into cannabis? Well, I'm uh, I'm uh, I come from a small town in uh, a little bit outside of Montreal, Quebec, and mm -hmm. uh, you know I I actually first joined the the industry by working in a head shop industry. Mm -hmm. So it was selling bongs, pipes, uh, vaporizer, cannabis seeds, small amount of nutrients, one liters, four liters, uh, and. I started really there around 2003, and very quickly I've met uh, one of the first Canadian who actually had the right legally to consume cannabis for medical purposes. Mm -hmm. So, you know, being in that, that environment was really what what started it at all. Because you know, in the in the head shop industry, you meet a lot of users, a lot of you know, grower, a lot of people who process dealers back then, uh, dispensary people, people who would need the the kind of supply we were providing. Yeah. Uh, just talk more about the first, basically the patient you got. How how did you? Uh, I saw that you kind of were growing for her. How did you figure out what did she need, and then what did you grow? For so her? so the person I've met was a very, was a very uh, very special case. Like it, it was back then, it was almost no doctor would sign for medical purposes. It was unknown and un, 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 not understood well yeah. and stuff like this. So that person was actually a victim of a of a you know a shot uh, a shot infection. She got a shot with the different viruses. Like it was a bad batch from the pharmaceutical back then. Oh. We're talking in the early eighties. Yeah. And, uh, and that person had symptoms that would turn around from one illness to another. Mm -hmm. So it was very hard to manage. And it started all that, you know, that pheno hunt quest, mm -hmm. like trying to find one that helps her sleep when she, she was lacking of sleep, one find one that needed, like that was maybe promoting a little bit more appetite when she was having the symptoms of another illness that would yeah. suppress appetite and so on. So it started from there and I was always, you know, a, I would say a recreational user. So mm -hmm. for me, it's it was a way to explore and, and and a way to start to to evolve in there. You know, obviously back then there was no one really legally allowed to do this. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, very few people in Canada. So the nutrient company and the the, the light company and the hydroponic uh, retailer were were really tried to help everyone who could get in that system just because. For them, it was a legal field, you know, a legal tri field, right? Mm -hmm. Like they would say, is the filter would work well? Is the nutrients working well? Whether you and for them, it was, you know, still anecdotal and still informational, but yeah. it, it was something that they never had before. Mm -hmm. So basically, you working in a head shop uh, gave you a lot of experience in terms of. When you're selling products, you know what you need to grow products. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Like I was a star seller. Like yeah. I, I, I've lost a little bit of pay, uh, of uh, of passion being behind a counter and mm -hmm. you know customer service like directly like this. I mean, I, I've owned an hydropon an hydroponic store after that for many years. So mm -hmm. I did a lot of years in 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 the retail business and. It helps to it helps to 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 build up people. Like people would go with two lights, and then they wanted to go bigger. So you can really you know bring them there and mm -hmm. and, and be able to get them have success. So your business has success. Yeah. So it was it was really that environment that really you know helped me succeed because I would meet sales re sell rep from. A certain nutrient company like Canna, mm -hmm. or 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 get the you know get a cell rep uh, you know to 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 hook me with me on a, on a Friday and have a smoke and say yeah. hey uh, you know <laughs> I'm gonna give you a two a two months uh, a two month supply for for your CO two bottles yeah. or something like this. So it was back then it was really much a community because they they saw the change happening and they wanted that change to happen, which lead us to legalization today. It was it was a big open you know door foot in the door. Mm -hmm 
from the medical, it grew up and then, you know, obviously legalization, you know, started to be a, a subject because a lot of people were using already recreationally. Mm -hmm. So it was it was really that environment and being in that environment, be at the right place at the right time around the right people. Yeah. Same thing then here in a, in a show like Lyft, yeah. you know, you, you get surrounded with professional of different aspect of the plant growing processing uh, uh, joint rolling uh, pack, uh, every kind Back of things you get, like anything, yeah. in the gold rush picks and shovels sold more than people made made money right yeah. so picks and shovels are 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 everything to this industry and that's how you you're able to evaluate have ideas and be a, a game changer for this industry yeah uh, so you're talking about certain types of phenols have certain kinds of effects uh, i know some people say it's a controversial topic but what i have read till now there's no strain which is straight and like a sativa no. left right now because there's like those are lines very few and, very yeah. few for sure uh, w what uh, strains or phenols you would say were more like sleepy effects the, it's an interesting fact because we 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 actually sell cannabis you know in retail store based on indica sativa uh you know hybrids Hybrid, yeah. stuff like this right like you're right there's no not much land race left and those land race you know are the the core business of breeding at some point right yeah. now what we're doing is we're doing a lot of inbreeding and that mm -hmm. never ended well in the history of agriculture <laughs> right so so you know right now we're still in the pool in the gene pool where we we have good genetics and stuff but ultimately we'll need to bring back those land race to start new lives new stocks and stuff mm -hmm. like this uh, i think it's uh you know and we we're gonna keep selling an, an advertising product like indica it, it makes you sleepy sativa mm -hmm. but on a grower level it has a bit way bigger meaning you yeah. don't grow sativa like you grow indica you don't have the same plant count per square meter you don't have the same flowering time you, you don't necessarily have the same growing technique if you want to optimize your garden. Mm -hmm. So on a, an agricultural perspective, it's a very import, important, uh, you know, biological threat that you need to understand when you're a grower. Mm -hmm. Sativa tends to produce certain terpenes mm -hmm. and, so, and indica tends to produce certain other terpenes, which mainly makes you sleepy yeah. relaxed stuff like this and then this is all their entourage effect and a lot of people say there's no scientific you know around around all the the, the entourage, entourage effect, effect but i'm gonna add, tell the, these people we've been burning incense since the time of the egyptians yeah <laughs> and for what reason because it creates a mood it creates a, it creates a, a stimulation because it's a little bit the same thing it's not like you're eating a, a mango yeah when you inhale a mango it's going to make you that you know the mercine and stuff yeah. like this it's going to it's going to give you a different effect so if aromatherapy is not a science it's a strong fact yeah. right and i think it's all linked into this so yeah. you will still have sativa that leans toward the father who was like maybe a, an indica hybrid that was not fully stabilized as an indica so you will have those outside the box thing mm -hmm. but i think ultimately it's you know sativa tends to produce certain terpene that Terpenes. makes you happier or, yeah. or, or, or or more energetic and so on so it's it's a very biological threat but mm -hmm. again i think on the grower perspective yeah. it has a huge meaning because yeah. you know we all have endocannabinoid system different mm -hmm. a sativa that does something to me might do something different to you yeah. so instead of basing everything around that if the grower understand that it's 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 a win your sativa can be priced at a, a reasonable price even yeah. if it's a longer flowering because yeah. it's not the same growing technique right yeah like i work on the retail side right now i work at a retailer so i see so many people coming in they're like on the box it says indica but it doesn't make me sleep it gives me sativa effects and obviously you try and explain to them obviously this is not true it's yeah. and it's part of the of the understanding for, like i was saying of the of the grower if yeah. you understand that okay i'm pheno hunting for sativa it should be one of the 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 threat you're looking into mm. if you grow into a sativa uh, or any actually if you pheno hunt you're going to have expectation i want this amount of thc or roughly i want this kind of bud structure i want color i want resistance mm -hmm. i want this it's a, the breeder's job when you do the pheno hunt to yeah. actually be able to say, okay, I got this plant. It's amazing, but it doesn't check mark that, yeah. that, that box, box, right? Yeah. So it's still, it's still hard because then you, you give up on, on an athlete mm -hmm. because, you know, he, he, he didn't tie his shoes. Mm -hmm. But, you know, at that point, 
try to rename it, try to, to make it something else because it's, it's like children's. Yeah. All your children's going to be different. One might uh, end up doctor, the other one, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, street broomer. I mean, like it, it, it's genetic. Yeah. So all the kids are different. You just have to give them the best environment so they can succeed in whatever they're going to end up doing. Oh, same, thing with, same, same thing with the, with the plants. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I often vulgarize the plant within the human behavior mm-hmm. and it, they're, it, they're very similar and easy to understand yeah. when, you, when you bring it in, in that perspective. That's a great way to put it. Uh, I know you're a huge extract fan. So uh, when you were talking about op- optimization, what plants or what things that you focus on that creates like more resin that way you can create it, more it's content. again again the 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 the, the box you try to check mark yeah. like if you look at you know for example in in lebanon in morocco in nepal mm-hmm. you know you, and and people say oh the weed is not that great in morocco well the weed is not grown for flowers the grown yeah. is, is is grown for resin per acres yeah so it's the same thing if you grow indoor and you want to do those rosin if you want to do those things mm-hmm. some plant will be resin giver because of the the structure of the trichomes what type of the of trichomes because there's you know many mm-hmm. types of trichomes that gives differently when you do solvent less when you do you know stuff like this yeah. when it comes to ethanol it's a little bit different everything mm-hmm. that's solvent dissolve the resin so you're going to be able with right procedure to extract almost everything or everything you want from the biomass but mm-hmm. when it comes to solvent less it's like a flower it's you're directly directly in contact from flour, no yeah. transformation. You're breaking off these things. So the quality of the base material in, in, in solventless is 90% of your success. So yeah. to, to pheno hunt for something that, you know, has a, a good giving, you know, a good hash, a good risen texture and all that, it's mm-hmm. one thing. A lot of people forget that they can pheno hunt for nice bud structure for the, you know, their, their, their top part of the yeah. plant. And then look at whatever's left because, you know, you get top dollars for your top buds. Yeah. <laughs> but why try to screw people and say, well, I, you know, I'm going to package a bunch of bud in there that are small, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. You can have value elsewhere if you if you make your pheno hunt the right way. Pheno yeah. hunting is like trying to check all the bugs that you want from a plant. And mm-hmm. you need a lot of seeds. Sometimes you're restricted. Mm-hmm. But again, it's it's the key. Understand the plant and understand what you expect the plant to give. No, oh, that's amazing. Because you got nice buds that, yeah. you know, plants that produce very nice buds and are amazing flowers that will be very hard to extract when you talk about solventless. Oh. So it's it's really, you have to try it and it, if criteria for you yeah. to do to be able to process hashish yeah. or, or something like this, you need to do that procedure and extract it and say, okay, this is giving me a 20% return, 15% mm-hmm. return, and then standardize your growth. That's all yeah. you have to do. Uh, have you seen anything right now in the market, which I know a lot of uh, stores, they do rosin press. Yeah. So it's not like... F- on site, right? On site. It's not flash frozen or anything. So yeah. you don't get the best... Uh, uh, the terpene but, levels, yeah. right? But uh, do you know, do you, on the top of your head, do you remember any one of the flower which is in the current market, which gives like a good output or no? I, I think it's always a try on error because yeah. I, if I grow a clone from the same strain and you grow it, mm-hmm. uh, the nutrients is going to have an influence. Your environment is going to have a, a, an influence. So to give an example, I, I did, you know, I'm, I'm a big, I, I work a lot in the R&D department mm-hmm. with Mood Ring and Neptune. And yeah. what I find, and I still, you know, grow personally at home from my MMAR pro, uh, uh, license. Mm-hmm. So, you know, things like watering, a plant that's overwatered mm-hmm. will have harder time to give their, their that resin, and that resin will be way darker. Mm-hmm. So, it is always about it is always about it for me. It's more about the grower than the strain itself. If yeah. I grow, a, I don't know, a, a, our Florida citrus cushion, yeah. I give you a clone. <laughs> Yours might have you know a slight different smell and or or, 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 or look different. Yeah. And again, it's not only about the grow. You can ruin your old harvest and your old three months at harvest trim drying curing Curing. and packaging i've seen people package like you know like it was uh, it it was a a, a, like a sugar or something and Mm -hmm. they break off the buds or or they don't trim enough or so even after you got a standardized grow and Mm -hmm. that you control your grow and you have a good quality product Mm -hmm. there's that whole other part that within two weeks you can literally kill four months of work Work. Uh so i think it's more a trial and error and Mm -hmm. i i really embrace that that initiative because you know those concentrates are still a small part of the market yeah and and people are you know i think it's it's a pricey product still on the market when Mm -hmm. you talk about rosin diamond and all the dabables yeah so it's it's something that you know 
people who know about that product either did it at home or had someone make them try or mm -hmm. someone who kn they know do rosin at yeah. home, right? So it's hard to get these people into a product that's very expensive when it's so simple to do at yeah. home. But again, you know, there's different market. There's the, the regular user, there's the, the big, you know, aficionados of yeah. cannabis. And these, these people are a little bit more niche market yeah. when it comes to that. You also need a lot of training to also do good rosin presses at home. It's not like anyone can do it. You, you can, you, you can surprisingly enough, you know, back in the days, I'm, I'm 40 years old. So yeah. when, when, when I was in, in my beginning, a lot, a lot of the learning was about the books mm -hmm. because even the internet was an early age yeah. and people wouldn't share necessarily because it was illegal market. Yeah. People were either scared to be flagged on the internet or, or get, you know, caught up mm -hmm. or whatever. And, and the others just didn't want to share because they paid that expertise at a high price yeah. of learning, right? Try on errors. So surprisingly enough, nowadays, you know, it's, it, you know, I think that's what the medical community brought in. Mm -hmm. Like it, it was no more about greed. It was no more about making money. It was no more about illegal mm -hmm. business. It was about people trying to make a better product. Yeah. And you see that a lot, like illegal product are, you know, mid okay quality once in a while you got the guy who grow it for himself and has a little bit extra for sale yeah but as soon as you got medical the more quality you you try the more quality you you learn mm -hmm. so and, and I, you know i was a victim a little bit of this like <laughs> if i give a bud to someone yeah. and then they realize wow like weed doesn't necessarily make me cough and this and that and they find attribute that didn't find another thing yeah then they have our time going back to this so they, yeah. they expect higher and higher and having a lot more product of good quality on the yeah. market is actually the best the best education we can have yeah. i think uh florida citrus kush was like a huge hit uh, <laughs> yes <laughs> do you want to share like your the pheno where you got from them or something like that uh, it's uh, it's actually you know it's a uh, it's a product that uh, we 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 went on a trademark for it's uh -huh. uh, it's really uh, for us it was really uh, you know when we, obviously when we launched the flower line we wanted to be you know a flag we wanted it to mm -hmm. be a flagship for our yeah. for our our brand mood ring flowers and the tuna cans yeah so you know we we didn't uh, um, we, we didn't cut any corner on mm -hmm. that on that thing right like we, we neptune doesn't grow so we have to go into contract growing or yeah. or, or, or or long term supply stuff like this but it's a, it's a secret that's going to be kept well for for a while that's amazing <laughs> we're actually short on time right now but it was great talking to you anytime it was so a pleasure for sharing your knowledge with us all right thanks